Hello students, this is Dr. Ranjini, Assistant Professor in Biotechnology. Today, in this session, we learn about the introduction about lipid metabolism. In your previous semester, you have learned about the lipids. So let me brief about what are lipids and uh, what are fatty acids. Lipids are of great importance to body as chief concentrated storage form of energy. Besides this, these lipids also play a role in cellular structure and various other biochemical functions. Lipids are heterogeneous group of compounds and they are not polymers like our polysaccharides, proteins and nucleic acids. Lipids are mostly small molecules. So these lipids may be defined as these are uh, regarded as organic substances, relatively insoluble in water, but they are soluble in organic solvents like alcohol, ether, etc. Actually, they are related to fatty acids and utilized by the living cells. If you classify the lipids, lipids are classified like simple lipids, complex lipids and derived lipids. In some textbook, they also gave another time term that is miscellaneous lipids. Simple lipids, complex lipids, derived lipids and miscellaneous lipids. Simple lipids are esters of fatty acids with alcohol. So if you just remember the lipid, we remember only fats and oils. Okay, so fats and oils is they are the one category of simple lipids. Simple lipids are of two types. One is fats and oil. They are called as triazyl glycerols. The another simple lipid is waxes. Fats and oils are called triazyl glycerols. These are esters of fatty acids with glycerol. These are esters of fatty acids with glycerol. The only difference in uh, fats and oil is the physical appearance. That is, fats are uh, a soy, uh, solid and oil is liquid in form at room temperature. If you take another group of uh, simple lipid, that is waxes, these are esters of fatty acids, usually long chain fatty acids with alcohol. Fats and oils are, these are the esters of fatty acids with glycerol. Waxes are esters of fatty acids with alcohol, that is long chain fatty acid with alcohol, other than glycerol you should remember here the difference between fats oil and the waxes waxes are esters of fatty acid with alcohol other than glycerol but fats and oils are esters of fatty acid with glycerol the other classification of lipid is complex lipid otherwise called compound lipids these are uh, esters of fatty acids with alcohol containing additional groups such as phosphate, carbohydrate, protein, nitrogenous base, like that. So they are further classified as phospholipids, nucleolipids, like that, they are classified. Glycerophospholipids, sphingolipids, lipoproteins, like this. The next, uh, another uh, category is derived lipids. These are derivatives obtained on the hydrolysis of group one and group two lipids. So these are derived from simple and complex lipids. 
So I told you in some textbook, they also give miscellaneous lipids. This includes large number of compounds possessing characteristics of lipids. Example, carotenoids, squalene, terpenes, etc. Now in this lipid metabolism, we concentrate more on triazyl glycerol. These are otherwise termed as triglycerides. These are otherwise termed as triglycerides. But we will be using these terms, fat soil, waxes, fatty acids, etc. So fatty acids are carboxylic acids with hydrocarbon side chain. They are the simplest, simplest form of uh, lipids. These are further classified fatty acids as uh, even chain fatty acid or odd carbon fatty acid. Like in the carbon skeleton, if they have an even number of carbon atoms, they are called even chain fatty acid. If they have the odd number of carbon atoms, they are called odd carbon fatty acid. Further, these are classified like saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. Saturated fatty acids do not contain double bond, but like unsaturated fatty acids contain one or more double bonds. Okay, now, so this is just the uh, introduction about what are lipids. Now we'll concentrate on lipid metabolism. So these are important for cell structure and function. They are hydrophobic and non-polar in nature. Triazylglycerols are the body fuel reserves. Lipids contribute about 15 to 20% of the body weight in the human beings. So lipid, total percentage of lipid in the human being is about 15 to 20 percent. Triazyl glycerols, otherwise termed as triglycerides, are the most abundant lipids. They comprise about 85 to 90 percent of the body lipids. The lipid proportion is only 15 to 20 percent. In that, about 90 percent is formed by triazyl glycerols. Most of the triazyl glycerols are stored in adipose tissue and they serve as energy reserve of the body. This is in contrast to our other biomolecules like carbohydrates and proteins, which cannot be stored to a significant extent for energy purposes. Fat also act as insulating material for maintaining the body temperature of animals. So triazyl glycerols play an important role as a source of energy and they are the uh, maximum proportion of the lipid is made of, of uh, triglycerides and they're stored in adipose tissue and also play an important role in regulating or maintaining the body temperature of animals. Why should fat be the fuel reserve of the body? Why not other biomolecules? Triazyl glycerols are the most predominant storage form of energy. There are two main reasons why fat being the fuel reserve of the body. The first one is the triazyl glycerols are highly concentrated form of energy. They are the highly concentrated form of energy. Yielding about nine calorie per gram. One gram triazyl glycerol releases how much? It is nine calorie energy will be released. Whereas our carbohydrates and protein, they produce only four calorie per gram. Triazyl glycerol releases 
or yield more energy of 9 calorie per gram whereas carbohydrates and proteins are releasing only 4 calorie per gram this is because fatty acids found in triacylglycerols are in the reduced form triacylglycerols are esters of fatty acid with glycerol here fatty acid what we found is in the reduced form that's the reason it's giving more energy the another point is why we are using or the cell is using the the fat as the fuel reserve or the triacylglycerol as the fuel reserves triacylglycerols are non polar they are not polar they are non polar and hydrophobic in nature they are hydrophobic in nature that is they have less affinity towards the water hence they are stored in pure form without any association with water that is in anhydrous form they are non polar they are non polar and they are in hydrophobic nature in pure form without association with water on the other hand glycogen protein glycogen and uh, uh, proteins are polar in nature 1 gram of glycogen combines with 2 gram of water for storage that is the difference why these uh, triglycerols triglycerides or triacylglycerols are rich source of energy they are pure form they are in the anhydrous form they are hydrophobic and non polar but other biomolecules proteins or the uh, glycogen which is stored in the body it is glycogen one gram of glycogen is combining with two more gram of water during storage for this two reasons stated uh, just now one gram of the fat stored in the body yields nearly six times as much as energy as one gram of hydrated glycogen releases that is one gram of fat energy is equivalent to six times the one gram of hydrated glycogen releasing energy in a healthy adult individual if you consider he is weighing 70 kg about 10 to 11 kg of fat is stored if you are weighing 70 kg in your body you will have 10 to 11 kg of fat it is stored mostly in adipose tissue which corresponds to a fuel reserve of 100,000 calories that is 100 to 11 kg of sorry 10 to 11 kg of fat in 70 kg person is equivalent corresponds to fuel reserves of 100,000 calories if this much of energy was to be stored as glycogen instead of fat then what could be the weight of the the person the weight of the person would have increased by at least 55 kg if this glycogen is about to release about 100 calorie of energy the person weight would be around 70 kg plus 55 kg so will be around 135 kg but in nature the fats are bone molecules they are non-polar and they are hydrophobic they are stored in the reduced form and they are reducing the body weight of the individual and they are storing energy rich or they are storing the energy in them this explains why fat has been chosen as a fuel reserve during evolution the fuel reserve in the form of fat stores will meet the energy requirements for several weeks of food deprivation in man and also in hibernating animals in hibernating animals they provide good example for uh, utilizing fat reserves that is stored in their body that is regarding
why the cell utilizes the fat as fat as the fuel reserve next so metabolism means oxidation and synthesis of biomolecule now we want to the fatty acid oxidation the fatty acids in the body are mostly oxidized by beta oxidation beta oxidation may be defined as the oxidation of fatty acids on the beta carbon atom this results in the sequential removal of two carbon fragments that is acetyl coa that is acetyl coa the nature of the fatty acid oxidation was identified as early as 1904 1904 by the german scientist franz noop by the german scientist franz noop what he did is he fed the dogs fatty acids labeled at their last carbon atom that is you know about alpha beta and like that it will be named depending on the position of the functional group so he labeled at the last that is omega carbon atom with phenyl ring the dogs excreted in urine a final product phenyl acetic acid when they were fed even carbon fatty acid i told you the fatty acid if they have the even carbon in their skeleton they are called even chain fatty acid when the dogs were fed with even chain fatty acid or even carbon fatty acid which was labeled the dogs excreted phenyl acetic acid and at the same time when they were fed with odd carbon fatty acid they excreted benzoic acid so phenyl acetic acid for even chain fatty acid and benzoic acid for odd chain fatty acid based on his observations noop proposed that fatty acids are degraded by the oxidation of beta carbon atom he was the first scientist to propose that fatty acids are degraded at the beta carbon atom surprisingly it took nearly 50 years to confirm the noops hypothesis the enzymes involved in oxidation and reaction mechanism were elucidated only by 1950 almost 46 years the important biochemists contributed uh, to our knowledge of fatty acid oxidation are uh, leninger albert leninger levis leboy levis leboy yujin kennedy linen and david green these biochemists they proved the noops hypothesis and they gave more knowledge about fatty acid oxidation this fatty acid oxidation that is beta oxidation of even chain fatty acid involves three important stages three important stages so it's a catabolic reaction which involves three important stages the first one is the activation of fatty acids 
activation of fatty acids which takes place in the cytosol which takes place in the cytosol second stage is the transportation of activated fatty acids or acylated fatty acids activation of fatty acid is the acylation of the fatty acid that is acyl coa coa group will be added to the the fatty acid will be transported to the mitochondria this fatty acid oxidation takes place in the mitochondrial matrix so due to that the normal fatty acids cannot pass through the membrane so it will be coenzyme a group will be added to the fatty acid to form acyl coa then it will be transported to the mitochondria after it is transported to the mitochondria the oxidation of the fatty acid takes place at the beta carbon atom hence it is called beta oxidation so this removal of the acetyl coa that is two carbon compound takes place in the mitochondrial matrix that is called beta oxidation beta oxidation is the fatty acid oxidation this involves three important steps one is activation of the fatty acid coenzyme a will be added to form the fatty acid will be converted into acyl coa then these acyl coa activated fatty acids will be transported into mitochondria and in the mitochondrial matrix the removal of the acetyl coa takes place from the e1 chain fatty acid at every beta carbon atom and removes the acetyl coa this is called beta oxidation so in this session we learned about the introduction about the lipids and why the reserve food material body fuel reserve is the triglycerides or the lipids and at the same time we concentrated on why the fats are the fuel reserves of the body and we concentrated on about the introduction about the fatty acid oxidation who proposed it and what are the stages in the next session we learn about the fatty acid oxidation in detail i hope you understood this session thank you